Native Americans were not considered uh, U.S. citizens until 1924. That means that, that didn't give us the right to vote. Um, it didn't give brown women the right to vote. It, it, that we weren't a part of that history. Um, we, in the state of Arizona, didn't get the right to vote or the right to register to vote um, until 1948 when two Native American um, World War II veterans came back and tried to register and were denied and then sued the state of Arizona. That didn't protect them from being turned away or um, other people from being turned away or um, being denied the right to register to vote. Um, that came with the, with the Voting Rights Act of 1965. In our community, um, I like to give the example of my grandmother, though. Um, she would have been um, 30 years old the first time she was um, able to vote um, in 1948. And this is just my grandmother, not like my great-great-grandmother or anything like my grandma. Um, she also did not speak English or did not read and write in English. Uh, but she still had the right to vote, um, but didn't have the right to translate her services until the mid-1970s. Um, and those types of, of barriers were discouraging people um, throughout Arizona's history, throughout United States history, of people becoming civically engaged. Thank you guys for being here. Um, it's a wonderful evening. I know it's Friday. Uh, everyone's, you know, had a long week. Um, this is probably uh, not our first ticket. However, I'm glad that you guys are here because as we draw closer and closer to these elections, it's becoming more and more apparent that we definitely need to engage our community uh, because it's, all it's going to do is really empower our community. As a community, we elect uh, tribal leaders into office. Um, Myself, as an example, I, I am a representative for one of our districts here uh, in our nation, and um, and I can see, you know, that it, it really, it it really does keep the the circle tight in in trying to ensure that um, community members are informed, um, that those who you know feel uh, feel that, you know, whether it's fear, whether it's uncertainty, um, you know. They, they want to just, they want to know. Community members want to know. They want that communication, open communication from their tribal leadership. A lot of outside leadership, they rely heavily on tribal council and those, those that are elected. And so then that conversation pretty much stops there and doesn't trickle down to the actual constituents that like state leaders who also represent. Even this tonight has never been done on the nation here. So having uh, this evening is, is very you know, remarkable for the nation you know, in, in trying to uh, bring candidates and person to come out and just having them see you know, the nation and see some of the needs but also hear from the community you know, themselves. You know, what, are, what are our purposes? What are, what are we doing? How can we uh, you know, engage and speak with you on you know, some of the issues that really affect our, our community, our nation as a whole? We really, seriously, we are not about trying to take over politically. Um, we're really about trying to create those spaces within our community to have this conversation. Um, you know, like we said before, over and over, uh, we have been finding out not only, you know, what, not only that we weren't being invited to certain tables, but we didn't even know what tables existed. Um, we didn't even know what p tables we've been, um, we've, we haven't even been aware of uh, this entire time. And, and for us, it's, it's about questioning, it's about educating ourselves, it's about educating our community, it's about empowerment. Indivisible Thano was formed shortly after Trump was inaugurated um, uh, into the presidency. Um, we were having conversations um, with tribal members about the fear that our community was feeling um, at the constant rhetoric um, about the border wall. We were discussing the possibility of it being the next standing rock where 
you know, people would maybe flock to the border uh, to use their bodies in protest. Um, and it's a hundred and temperatures reach 117 degrees, and we didn't want to have an um, a disaster on our hands. So before we um, started making a call to the public um, to come down, we wanted to know what legally was possible. And so we realized that we needed to educate ourselves and provide education for the public um, to find out what was possible. Although the, the, the lines of our reservation are really important for certain reasons, you know, those, those are colonized lines. Those, those lines were drawn in the dirt um, and weren't something that our people followed before. Um, and so, you know, our, our traditional lands, you know, went far into Mexico and up north past Phoenix. We are putting ourselves in spaces where often people are saying to us, I didn't know the border wall um, cut across your lands. Um, even though we have the second largest um, reservation in the in the state, most people don't know we're there. It's also really important to note um, that when we talk about the uh, representation for Native Americans um, in Arizona, first of all, there are 22 distinct tribal nations in Arizona, um, but when we talk about how many Native American state legislators, there are either representatives or senators, we're still talking in firsts. Uh, Arizona is a, an awesome word, Arshon. Um, Tucson is uh, Chukshon. Um, and all of those come from, from indigenous people and, and our history and our lands. Um, but we have very little representation um, within our state government. What we're trying to do right now is really engage our community, empower them, ensure that they have uh, the understandings and, and the knowledge that you're going to receive this evening, but also you know, getting ready for, for elections. You know, it's coming up, it's coming up real quick. Uh, I know there's a lot of community members out there, um, a lot of young, new voters, and also our elders that could really use this information and, and it will really be helpful as, as they go into the voters box. Honestly, I, I never realized a lot of these things. I never knew that, you know, I thought our water was fine. I thought our lives were okay. I thought everything was okay, you mean, because I grew up here. You know, this is where I grew up. I mean, this is home. I, I did, honestly didn't know anything different. But getting more involved and, and learning these things, it it really helps to, to shape your, you know, your mentality and ensure not, not just for fighting for these things, but they're just basic human rights. Tribal sovereignty, uh, tribal rights from um, water rights to um, land and, and even, you know, as we were talking about earlier, there are gaming as well. You know, these are all very important um, topics to, that we felt, yeah, they weren't being represented, yet, um, especially on a local level. The Tohono O'odham tribe had gone back and forth with other casino operating tribes, city, state, and federal officials in public forums and courtrooms hoping to stop this from coming. I think we do <clears throat> rely heavily on uh, tribal leaders, but oftentimes uh, we feel as our community feels that their um, voices aren't being heard. And when it's just our tribal leaders you know, at, at, um, at different uh, tables, that the community's message isn't being brought forward. And that's what I think uh, Indizuo Tono is really uh, out to capture, is that um, community voice. Now, as in Indivisible Tohono, we're seeing where that break of communication lies. And so um, because of that, because um, we, we show up, uh, whether we're invited or not, we're, <laughs> we're now seeing that we're being invited. We're making headway um, on a state and even on a congressional level of being recognized that the community is also holding um, our officials accountable. And that hasn't been done in the past. So we're at a point of where we're trying to move forward and saying we matter and 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 why we talk about that now is because of the very fact that these forums that we're holding on our nation are the first in our history, political history.
and that says something you know that that's that's saying something huge is that you know it's 2018 and uh, a couple months ago we had 19 candidates who were running for within the state and uh, federal here you know saying that they 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 want to represent us and 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 having having um, the gall, you know, to tell them that we're constituents is, is really impressed the heck out of them because of that history.